You know, a lot of people think that building fine furniture projects is beyond their capabilities. But with a few basic skills and the right tools, we'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Les Sizek. And I'm Avian Rogers. On this show, we're going to teach you how to build an occasional table like this using basic woodworking skills that you can apply to all different types of tables. Well, let's get to it. I'm ready. In addition to these ordinary shop tools you see behind me, there's a few special tools you'll need to build your end table. You'll need a belt sander, a pad sander, bar clamps, a taper jig, a table saw, a router, and a doweling jig. A little bit of patience and a good set of plans. Good luck to you. Okay, now selecting the right materials for any job is an important part of the process, including building your own table. First thing you need to do is decide what kind of wood you're going to build your table out of. And we decided to use oak, but that's a personal choice. Now you're going to want your table to last for a while, so choose quality materials. We recommend using a furniture grade or otherwise labeled select grade lumber. So when you go to your hardwood supplier or to your lumber yard, look for wood that's been properly dried, as straight as possible, and free and clear of knots as much as you can find. And you can get away with some knots and some tear out or splitting on the ends. Because when you're cutting your material to the proper dimensions, you can cut around those. Just make sure that you allow for some waste. And we do recommend that you use hardwood because it will stand up to daily use much better. All righty, now I'm going to go gather up our materials to get started. You want everything you do in your home shop to be fun, and you want your projects to turn out without any mistakes. The way to do that is to have a very clear idea in your mind what that project looks like when it's going to be all finished and what all the steps are required to get to the work done. Now, that means you need a plan. Uh, you can make one yourself or you can purchase one. And if you're not a very experienced woodworker, we recommend that you purchase a plan like this one. It'll tell you every step of the way just how the project gets done. It'll tell you how to cut every piece of wood, how to process that piece before you assemble it, how the assembly goes, and how to finish the project. With that in mind, you can't make any mistakes, and you're going to end up with a finished project just as nice as this one. So now that we've got our materials organized, we've got our plans, we're ready to go. If you're using rough or irregular stock, you'll have to use a jointer and a planer to surface all four sides of your wood. However, we're using already surfaced lumber, and we're going to assume that most of you are too. Now, even already surfaced lumber still has some irregularities. There might be slight warps, cupping, or crowning, and I'll explain what that means. First, to check for it, sight down the board. Now, I can see on this board there's a slight cup, so it means it dips, and you can see it here. If I put the board flat on this table, you can see this crack here running along and you can see where it touches down here. Now, a crown means that it is a high spot right here. Now, either way, these edges need to be joined so that when we go to ripping, when we are running our board along that ripping fence, it's going to be nice and straight. And there are a couple approaches to joining edges. So let's go down and take a look at how we're going to do that. As I just mentioned, there are a couple different approaches you can take for joining your edges. Now, if you have a joiner or a multi-purpose tool with a joiner attachment, you can use that. A joiner has a cutter head, which as you pass the board along on top right here, the cutter head will spin and shave off a small amount of material. All righty. Now I need to roll up my sleeves, get my glasses on. Now, you want to make sure that the crown part of the board goes up that makes the cup on the, on the bottom side. Um, and make sure that as you're running the board, you've got it pressed firmly up against this fence so you get a 90 degree edge. Okay, I'm going to check it now. Now, that was a pretty shallow cup, so it's probably going to be okay. If you had a deeper one, you 
You probably have to take another pass or two. That looks great. Okay, now if you don't have a joiner, we're going to discuss the table saw method. As for the table saw method, we prepared a sample here where we tacked a straight edge piece of plywood onto our board. With that, we can run this straight edge plywood along our rip fence and it will shave off that crown, thereby leaving us with a straight edge. So now once I'm done here, I'll turn the boards over to Les and he's going to rip the boards down to the right dimensions for our table. All right, gang, here's where things really start to get to be fun. We're going to cut the boards to the exact dimensions we need to put this table together. But before we start that, we're going to check with the plans and see exactly what we need to do. Now, we can tell from the plans that these rails need to be exactly three and a half inches wide. We can also see that the legs need to be cut out of inch and a half square stock, and the top itself will be laminated together out of several boards. Because of that, we're going to uh, put it together a little bit longer than it needs to be and a little bit wider than it needs to be, and we'll trim that down later. But first, we'll start with all our rip cuts. Those are cuts along the grain. Once we get everything ripped to the proper width, then we'll cut it to the correct length. Now, to mark these, we have to be very accurate, and we're going to use this steel rule to make a very accurate mark here at that three and a half inch mark that I just got off the plans. So here we go with a little mark at three and a half inches. And then with a very accurate steel square, I'll extend that mark down here so it'll give me a nice guide when I get to the table saw. There we go. And then because I'm going to be cutting a lot of boards, I don't want to forget which is the waist side of the mark. So I'll put a little X there. I'm using this pen so it'll show up really clearly. That little X tells me that I want the saw blade itself to be on this side, the waist side of the mark I just made. Okay, we've got all these uh, marks, so we're ready to go to the saw and get these cut. Now we're getting set up to do our ripping and cross-cutting. We're going to do the ripping first, as we said, and I'm very careful about setting this fence right to that mark I made, as you can see. We're at the point of no return now. If we make a mistake, it's back to the lumber yard, so we're certainly going to avoid that. So I can see that we're right on line there, so we're ready to make these rip cuts. Beautiful, we're perfect. Okay, our ripping is all finished. Now it's time to cross cut. We've checked the plans very carefully and found that we need uh, two pieces 19 and a half inches long, two pieces 13 and a half inches long. And we've measured very carefully and put our little mark here. We've got the X to show where the uh, waist is going to go. But before we do this cutting, remember measure twice, cut once. So I'm going to measure this again. There we go, 19 and a half. Got it right this time. And we're ready to make the cut. I'm going to line that mark up very carefully to the edge of the blade because I want that blade to go right down here on the waist side. You can see the X mark. Keeps me straight. And we're ready to go. We've completed the ripping and the cross-cutting procedure. Now we're ready to go on to step two, which is preparing the legs and rails. This is a point where our table is really starting to take shape. And it looks great. We're going to customize the table at this point. We've chosen the mission style. The mission style features a tapered leg, which is heavier at the top and thinner at the bottom. And we cut these legs on the table saw using a taper jig. And then the rail here is just a plain rail. I like this style, don't you? Mm -hmm. it's nice. There's lots of different styles you can choose from, just depending on your skill level and your taste. There are several different styles you can use using the same basic table style, but the legs require some turning on a 